Maybe. Okay. So this session is about future-proof styling in general and also in, oops, in Drupal 8. My name is Tomás Hajos. I'm from Hungary. I work for Integral Vision LTD as a Drupal web project manager and also a front-end developer. So why this talk? CSS is easy. Everyone can write CSS. It's just some rules you can write, everyone write. Also, designer writes CSS. There are companies who think the designer and front-end developer is the same thing. So why this talk? Uh, let me ask you, do you know how many CSS files are in Drupal 8? Uh, raise your hands if you think it's about 100. Okay, 200, yeah, 300, yeah, 300 is almost good. It's exactly 325 CSS files. See, it's a lot, I think so. Or I can show you that this is 116,000 characters of CSS. I think it's not so easy to deal with. I can't think that there is anyone who can know everything, every character of every CSS file in Drupal 8. So we need a mindset. We need something which help us, because CSS is easy to do wrong. That's why this talk is. So CSS is easy to do wrong. What I mean? This is CSS. Raise your hand if you never wrote something like this. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> I can't believe it. So why we do this? And how can we avoid this? Uh, the most important thing, always ask yourself. Ask yourself what I'm doing, why I'm doing this, what I want to do. Is there any other way I can do this? This is the most important thing. So let's see it again. It's really nice. It's worth to see it. It's as wrong as possible. There's lots of problems with it. I won't mention all, but I won't, will mention some of that. So let's the see the first. This is cyclomatic complexity. This is a, a software metric to indicate the complexity of a program. I will talk today a lot of, uh, lots of times uh, about programming because uh, the way we can improve our CSS and working and writing our CSS as we, when we learn from programming. And this is the first thing. Uh, cyclomatic is so interesting. The interesting thing that it is complex. If you see today uh, the talk from Balázs Dianiska Schnufki, he were talking about it. Complexity is wrong in general. When a thing is complex, it's hard to work with. So if you can, you always have to avoid complexity. As you can see, in the, this, what we have seen is just, if we would have a lot of if questions, it's really hard. If you see it in a program in PHP, you will say, oh, what's that? And that was also what we did. So don't write complex, make it simple. Always keep it simple. As you can see, it's a rule. Next thing about it. Maybe you can think about that we wrote the rule because of the context. So we can ask ourselves. You can ask yourself, are you sure this little uh, anchor element is red because it's in the title? Yeah, we wrote that. Also. Is it red because it's in a block? Maybe it is red because in the cyber. It's a typical thing. In the cyber, this has to be changed. It has to be red, it has to be bigger or smaller. Or maybe it is red because it's in the body. Seriously. <laughs> Are you sure? I'm not. So this is a rule. Here's a rule from Harry Roberts. I will mention him more times today. This is 
basically, cosmetics should not change depending on the location of the component. It's really important that he mentions that it's cosmetics. So it means when you set it is red, it has a border, it's a little bit smaller, bigger. This means cosmetics. This is the decoration part. When you talk about uh, layout part, it's, it's much harder to decide. But, but you can follow that. And also that this is about the components. So uh, if you know BEM, then you know that we have components and we have elements of components, which uh, only can be understand if you are talking about the components. An element is also related to its uh, block. So we are talking about components. So another thing, why uh, we wrote that long code? Maybe we wrote this because we wanted to undo things. Because we had a rule, we said the color of the anchor is gray. And then we had another uh, rule when we wanted to, to make it white, and then we wanted to make it red. And because there were other definitions in the CSS which set it white and we set it gray, we had to find a way to make it not happen. We have to undo this. Anytime when you have to do, uh, undo things in CSS, it's a cold smell. It, it's something you have to avoid. It's something that you have to have to light in your head, it's a problem. Why should I undo things? It's not, not a good thing when you write code, not because you have to lay out something, you have to decorate something. No, to write code to undo something. That's not good. You don't want to undo something. And why I have to write so long code to undo something? This is the worst part of CSS. This is specificity. It's not just hard to say, it's also hard to work with. Uh, do you know specificity? Everyone knows what specificity is. So, as we can see, we, we, can, we can think that it's, a, it's just a number, it's 133, but specificity doesn't work this way. It's much harder because we can have also this one. So, we can't override uh, with specificity, we can't over the, with a class or any number of classes, only one ID. You can do that. That's why we do, don't style anything which is related to an ID in CSS. There were also important rule. Important is really interesting. It's not related to specificity. It's related to cascade. And so it also has to be avoided. There's only one thing when you should use important when you set a default rule, which, which always have to win over everything. That's the only way. You, you have to use this, not to solve something, but to decide something. It's a very big difference. So, it's also a general rule. Keep specificity low every time, if you don't want to uh, fight with CSS. So, of course, Yeah, so uh, that's why I asked if you know specificity. So these are the numbers. As you can see, the different type of elements, different type of tools we use have different uh, specificity value. So this is, these were the numbers. So for example, uh, an HTML tag has the specificity, specificity of 0001. And if you have another uh, HTML element in your rule set, it also have one and they have together two and the third one makes it three. And it's also if you have a block, a class, and something like this, it's have a 10, and any times you use a class, it adds another 10 to this. So that's it. So, I said, keep it simple. I was talking about is a context, and you should ask yourself, is it context, is it really context, it really have to be, uh, affect the, uh, your styling of that element. And the ISO, I was also talking about specificity. Okay, so how to do that? What should we do? That's it.
That's the first thing, flat selectors. This means instead of this long, long, long selector, you have to find that little one you uh, actually styling. In this case, this is the anchor element. So and instead of that, you try to style it and uh, say, I want to deal the, with anchor element, which is in the body, in the node 90, in the cyber first, in the div block, in the title, instead of you say, I have an anchor and I can apply a class to it. This is an anchor, which is a title in the promo block. So it's a promo title. It have a name. It have a class. You use a class and you will style that class instead of that long, long, long selector. A very, very uh, interesting thing. Uh, this is really important to me. Since I, I uh, just started to deal with CS and I started to learn about uh, modern CSS approaches, it was really uh, hard to me to understand uh, what is an object in CSS and what is a component and what's the difference. Is there any different difference between them or, or not? Are they the same thing? Uh, you, you can know objects from object-oriented CSS from Nicole Sullivan. And you can know components from modern CSS methods and also from Drupal 8. In Drupal 8, CSS has components, a lot of components. But what, what's the difference? I, is there any difference? Yes, there is. So, an object is an abstraction. A component is a concrete piece of code. It's an implementation. An object is an abstraction. It's always have to be a really simple thing. Uh, and objects can have general names. You, you name generally things. Uh, but versus when you style a component, when you deal with a component, you are talking about a concrete part of your site. We are talking about the main navigation. We are talking about uh, the promo box. We are talking about the login form or, or something. Everything which you, can, which you can name what this is. This is, the, uh, this is the component. And when you are talking about it, how does it look like? Or what part of habits which, which are general, which is the same that the other components and the other components? That is the object. That is the abstraction. Let me show you. Here's a small snippet, HTML snippet, which has also objects and also have components in it. It will be easier to find if I show you his. These are the objects. This is the media object. And you can see there's a, a media class. I have a media image element. And also I have a media body element. Have you heard about the media object before? Yes, you know this. OK, that's great. This is from Nicole Sullivan. This is the first object. This is the first example of the object-oriented CSS. And also, we have another, we have other uh, classes. This is the testimonial class. This is a component. We have an avatar, which is an other component. And also, we have an avatar large, which is a variation of the avatar component. And we have a testimonial text, which is the part of the testimonial component. We're using BAM, B-A-M uh, naming here. Also, it's used by Drupal 8, which help, helps us to find which components are related, which classes are related, and which parts of the HTML are related to each other. So this is the HTML part. And this is just a little part of the CSS as, which, as we can use it. As you can see, the media objects only has a display rule, display table, and the width 100%. In the other part, the testimonial class, the component, has a lot of other things and also have a decoration. You have to see that uh, the object is really, really simple. It should do only one thing, just one thing. It's, 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 uh, as it's said by Harry Roberts, it's, it's like a ball and thing. An object is not, you, not the thing you will change or modify. It's an object, it's what is you use or not use, and that's it. It's a ball. You can use it or not use it. But to make it so, it has to be really simple. It really has to do only one thing. I will talk about a little bit more soon. So uh, just to say some uh, 
examples from Harry Obes. You can have the object media, which we were talking about. We can have the, for example, um, the island object, which is only boxes of content, or the nav, ob nav objects, which makes the elements horizontal, and so like this. So just one thing which can be general, generalized, which can be seen in the same in all things. And the small thing, you can see also these O and C letters in the name of classes. It's, it's something like uh, name, name spaces. It's, these are not, not real name spaces because then in CSS, everything is general. Everything works in the same level. But we can have ourselves developers to, to understand what, what are we dealing with. It's, it's, all, it's just the BM, BEM same thing, that it's, it's, a, it's have to find, you can see that, oh, that is an object. object. You, you, can, uh, you don't have to find out what this is. You will see it starts with, oh, it means an object, and this is also means that you may not to change it. You won't change it. You may use it or not use it. And we, you, you will see that this is a C, this is a component. It's, it can change it, uh, it's a part of the page you know you can work with. So, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, really good for me because the, the idea is from the Hungarian notation uh, thing, which, which was uh, uh, in earlier programming languages uh, a tool to, to, to create namespaces. This is the same thing. And you can know something like this from Drupal 8, where we have uh, GS prefixes to create JavaScript hooks, or if you know something about uh, smacks, then you can know that there are is or has prefixes also, which help you, you to decide what kind of class this is, or what do you use it for. Okay. It also helps us to know that how classes related to each other. So not their elements, but each other. So, I said that uh, it is important to to create classes which you use to do one thing. And it's a general rule. This is, about, this is the single responsibility principle. It's also a principle from programming. Here's an example. We have a class. It's, it's not so wrong. wrong. You can write something like this anytime. You have a you have a component, you have a class, it's a button login. You have a button and you styled it. It's a displayed inline, it have a padding, it's a background color, and it have a color. It's, it's easy, nothing really interesting here, but. If you look it closer, you can see that we're mixing things here. So we have a rule, we have a braze rule, which is about a layout kind of thing. And after that, we have a structural rule, depending. And after that, we have some rules which are about cosmetics, which are about decoration. So what could we do with that? This. Instead of one class, we can have three classes. We can have a general button class. We can have a variation, with a, which, is, which says this is larger. And we can have an other variation which is about the decoration of the button. Why is it good? This is good because it's much more reusable. You don't have to, you don't have to use the class again as it was, and don't, you, don't, you won't override it because you want a button, but you want a different background color, or you have, want a different uh, color on the text, of the text, or you have a smaller button or a larger button. If you use the cl class here, then you have to override it. You have to un undo things, and we don't want to undo things. We want to style your thing. If you have this separation, you use just the button, and you may use the button large with it, or we may, you use the button positive, or you create another variation, a but button negative, and so on. And you can combine them. And you can have a lot of combinations, and you won't override your code you will use your code. Oops. You can see this here also. That's, it's also, you can combine things. Okay, maybe I lost, that's okay. 
Next things, I think everything knows this. This is the dry principle. Why I mention this? As you know, this means don't repeat yourself. Here's an example where you can see how can you avoid repeating yourself. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's really interesting. Anyone who uses maybe the first thing you learned about it that you can use variables. This is only to use a variable. Why is it interesting? You can also say that, that if, you, if you create CSS from this SAS uh, code, you will have the unit four times. You will have the 20 pixels in every rule. So this is repeated. But it's completely OK. Because this is, so dry is not about re, not to repeat code. This is about not to repeat yourself. Because this way, if you want to change something, you will only change one place. It's one place, and one, won't do this is four times. And this is a little example. You can have much more complex code, which you should write a lot of times if you have to change something. But if you look for this thing and, and you find the things you can create a variable, you can create a mixing, you can create an object from it, you won't change it every time if you have to change it. You will change it only one time. And you won't repeat your stuff. So you will be happier, you will be quicker, it will work easier. And it's completely OK to have the values or uh, repeating code in CSS, because you can zip this CSS code. You should zip it. And that's, that can be minified. And that's OK. So you can work with it. OK. Next things. This is the open closed principle. Uh, everything what I'm talking about is related to each other. This is also, this is something I mentioned about uh, earlier. This is also about uh, which you were seen uh, in the cyclomatic complexity example. This is about when you write a class and you write something, and, uh, and mostly when you write objects, this, this should be open for extension but closed for modification. And this is for, uh, again, again to not, to, not to work more, not to override yourself. So here's an example. Uh, again, we have a button class here. We have a patterning of it. It's one EM and two EMs. But we move this button into sidebar, and we want this button in the sidebar to be a little bit larger. So we set sidebar button is one and a half and two and a half EM. It has to have a padding. But this time, we modified our base class which means that every any time we have a button in the sidebar every button have to be has to look like this this is not not good it's, it's leaking your code uh, we it's repeating it it's hard it's uh, you you can't easily override it this is something we said about that's not not we, it's something we don't want to do that it's not good uh, when you see something like this you can change your mind. You, you, want, you, you shouldn't say that. You shouldn't uh, think about that. I have a button in the sidebar, and because it's in the sidebar, it's bigger. No, it's not great. You have to think about that, that I have a larger button, and that, that is what I use in the sidebar. So a component shouldn't know anything about it where it is used. You use a larger variation, and you can use it anywhere, not just in the sidebar, the, in the page, in the content, in the header, anywhere. So instead of uh, modifying your original component uh, when it's in the sidebar, then you use a, a variation of your component. So it is not, not uh, modified, but it's extended. This is the component you use, and, and not the component you, you modify with another component. OK, so everything I said is about to write a lot of classes and a lot of different classes. And every HTML tag can have a lot of classes on it. It's something like it, uh, something like which uh, Morton DK uh, fighted against. It was a divitis. No, we may have classicities, maybe. 
So Martin isn't here, but he, he, I think he would say that it's glassy, it's, it's hard, we don't want HTML full of glasses, it's ugly, it's anything, I don't know. But, pardon? Yes, is, pardon? I'm really glad both of you, you mentioned. Also what you said and also what you said. Uh, layout is a, a little bit different thing. I don't want to talk about uh, that today because that's a thing I I'm, I'm have, uh, haven't got uh, a real strong opinion now. It's, it's a thing I have to learn about more. But that's you have the point. And also you said this is complex. So, is that better? We can't avoid complexity. If you have a big site, if, you have a, if, you have a, if we have a design which have a lot of components, a lot of variations, a lot of colors, elements, we can't avoid complexity. We, have, we will have complexity. We can't, can't avoid it, but we can manage it. It's really important. We can manage it. And if you, if you move classes to the HTML and use class names which are meaningful, that will help you. You will, you will look at the source code of the page and you will see what are you work with. You will see that, yes, this is a component, this is another. You will, see, you will understand the relations of the elements of the page. Classes for developers. It's, it's nothing about for, for the Google, it's nothing about the graphics. It's for us. It's for us developers to, to write meaningful code. These are hooks for us to create CSS styling for them. If you move, if we create meaningful classes and use meaningful classes in our HTML, it will help us. It's for us. That's it. So, okay, but you can say, wait, it is Drupal. You said that. We have templates with preferences. Yes, you may say, but I say, no, it is Drupal 8. And it's a huge difference. Really, a huge difference. So, why, why, why I say this? Before I, I say this, I ask you again to, to think. And the first thing I say, forgot classy and use stable. Why do I say this? Because classy has a lot of classes which was provided for you uh, by all those people who were work on Drupal 8. These are good classes, these are meaningful, but these are about Drupal 8, not about your project. You will have a project with a design and uh, which will need your classes and your decisions. When we made Drupal 8, we, we was, were not able, it's not possible to know what kind of projects will you have? We can think in Drupal, but not think in, in your project. And that's why I say use stable, when, and this way you will have only HTML and very few classes, and you can use your classes and decide about it. Yes? No, no? Uh, don't you know about stable? Stable is a very new base theme in Drupal 8, it was added in the last time of development, it's f some weeks uh, uh, before release, or one more, so one and a half. So now, if you, if you look at Drupal 8 source, you will see that we have stock, we have stable, and we have class C. Yeah, and it's easy to use stable, because you, if you don't uh, have a, a, a line about base team in your team, so if you don't dedicate a base team, you will use stable. If you don't want to use stable, you have to set base team to false. But that means that you will use the, the output of the core system, which can change and which can break your site theme. So if you don't set a base team, you will use stable. So it's really easy to use stable. Uh, 
now, the Bertic, Bertic and Seven are based on, based on Class C. So they can change all two. No, so, sorry, not, not because they are based on Class C. Bartik and Seven can change. Also, the core markup can change. Stable and Class C won't change in Drupal 8. So they always have the same output. So you can use, you can use both of them, but I, uh, I recommend to use Stable and use your classes. And this is the second thing uh, I, w I wanted to say. Forget about Drupal. I, I don't see not use Drupal. So big, big, big thing, uh, so understand me. It's not about not to use Drupal, we use Drupal. But when you work with Drupal as a teamer, uh, forget that this is Drupal. Forget that this is, this is a, a CMS and everything about it. You have, to, you have to start with your design, you have to start the page, you have to create the site you create and, uh, and uh, start to, to thinking about from this direction. And, uh, and, and don't think that, that this will be a node and this will be a view and, and don't have to think about that this will be a node nine or node article class and this will be view list class, no. You have to think about that this will be a post and this will be a list or something that. So you don't have to think in Drupal terms. You will think about Drupal when you build the site. That's okay, so you have to decide that this will be a node, this will be a content type, this will be a view, this will be a panel page or anything else. That's okay. But when you are working as a teamer, you, you don't have to think about Drupal. You have to, you have to think about your project. And uh, another thing, which can help in this thing, that you have to use a style guide. If you have a designer, or if you are a designer too, it's really a good thing to have a style guide, because it helps to identify the elements you work with. You have to, it helps you to identify the components. And, uh, and you find the components, you find the objects, and you find the right name for them. And they don't have to relate to, to Drupal in any way. So it's, it's really a good and useful thing. So, yeah? Okay. Uh, I said it's Drupal 8. It's really, really important because in Drupal 7, it was really hard most of the time to change the markup. If you wanted to add a class to an element of the page, uh, most of the time you have to be able to write preprocess pre -process, uh, code in PHP, in the template PHP file. But things changed, and in Drupal 8, we have a lot of template files, tweak templates. You can open them, and you can change the markup, and you can write the class names directly on the code in the markup. It's much, much easier. You don't have to be a programmer to be able to change the markup of Drupal. Or if you can't change the markup, because you don't have the right template and you're not able to create the right template. For example, I uh, worked with Drupal 8 to create a simple site, and I wanted to add classes. I wanted to change the markup, uh, which, was, which should be based on the type of the block. Drupal 8, we have different block types. But it's not possible in Drupal 8, if I uh, found it right. So if you, in this case, or if you are in a hurry, you can use sets, mix, and then extend. And that's the things you were talking about, that you can manage things in your CSS code if you can change your markup. It's not recommended, but, but possible if you have to do. And you can use sets, and you can use these things. One more thing. I was talking about uh, how components related to each other uh, and uh, I was talking about that uh, specificity is really important thing. Uh, I did not mention that, but it's also important. You should write your classes, and you should implement your classes, or import your classes in specificity order. So you have to decide what is your CSS structure is, how to organize your files. It's really important. As, as we said, we, we, organize, we have to organize our files in a way when we do, uh, do not override earlier components. And in, in Drupal 8 core, we use the SMAX method for it. I, I'd like to show and recommend to you another, another method today. It's called ITS. 
invent a triangle CSS. It's also from Harry Roberts. It's, a, it's nothing you, can, you, you should download. There's nothing to download. It's a meta framework or a methodology. It's, a, it's a, just about the order of your party as if you use CSS and any other preprocessors, or it's of ordered of the imports if you use only CSS. And it's really simple. It's just about file organization. I won't go all to DDS because Harry was able to talk about it an hour, and I don't want to say too much about it, but you can look for this thing. And I, I will say the most important, the basic things about it. So this is invent and triangle. This is look like this. As you can see, it's about ordering of CSS away when the generic from the generic components to the more explicit components, or from the far-reaching components to the more localized components, and, uh, and a way when specificity slowly grows. We, we affecting uh, in this uh, mindset, in this, in this import order, uh, smaller and smaller and smaller pieces of the DOM. So at the top, we have the general rules, which affects a lot of things, and when we go down, we have smaller, smaller things. So how does this look like? This is, these are the layers we can have. This is settings, tools, generic base, object, components, and utils. Uh, just one, one uh, sentence more uh, every, uh, every, about every part. So uh, the settings is about where you can have the, your global variables, your config switches, for example, colors, so color settings, font settings, your fonts you use, your breakpoints, and things like that. The, the second, the tools are about function and mixings. If you don't, if you don't use a preprocessor, you, you don't have to use settings or tools layer. The generic are the grand zero styles. These are the normalized, recess CSS, box sizing, and this, so on, these things. And it's easy to find out the next thing is the base. These are the unclass HTML elements, the type selectors. And this is really important when you style something, uh, HTML elements, you, you never do decoration or something like this. You can set just really the basics you have to want to use. It's the, most, the, mass, the best thing if you do not have too much setting in this level. The next layer is the objects. We were talking about this. These are the unstyled design patterns, uh, like the media objects I mentioned about. There are no decorations here, and we will find uh, general class names here. Uh, for example, if you have a wrapper class, this is related to the object layer. This is the most uh, general example. Maybe uh, I think everyone know everywhere use the wrapper class sometimes. The next layer is the components. Maybe you will have the most um, partias in this layer. These are the styled objects. These are the decoration. These are the design. These are the chunks of the UI you work with. It's the, in, this, in this layer, you will use much more explicit, explicitly named classes. For example, as I mentioned, C products list, promo box, or something like this, or header, or site login, site logo, and things like this. The last layer at the utility classes, which are, are which should uh, be not, you should not too much uh, utility classes, because they, they are really, really simple. Yeah, they are really, really strong, and they are just one step from inline styles. A utility class is something like a, like a float, or like this. When you, when you have a class which moves a, a part of your UI, to the left or the right, or, or you, have a, you can have a utility class you say, for example, uh, text-centered. And these are, this, this is the place where you can use the important statement. These, these are the classes when, where, which have to win every time when you use them. And because they, have to, they will win every time, you have to be very, uh, you have to very carefully use them. Okay, so these are, these are the principles. These were the rules I wanted to say to you. And now, uh, heard the one right way. And you have questions, yeah?
Absolutely no. <laughs> that was I was said uh, earlier that when you when you are working the when you see me something when you work as a front end developer when you work the man who create the style of the site you have to forget about Drupal. You you don't you, you work with Drupal, but but you 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 won't write your styles uh, guided by the functions. You write your styles as as uh, it dictated by the UI. These are UI elements. They are things the user will use. They don't care about that. This is a view. This is a, an input element. It's not important. Uh, and and it's not important for you uh, too, because you because you you don't uh, will style a uh, uh, views list. It's not important that it's generated by views. It's, who cares? This, pardon? Yes, yes, that's what I wanted to say. And there were another question? Yes, yes it is. There's a specific graph about it, yes. That's a good tool. So, any question? Yeah? Okay. Okay, uh, I answer you. So you can see the one right way. There is no one right way. So, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> uh, thank you. So it's not the end of uh, my presentation. <laughs> I started with that, you should ask yourself. So I want to ask you again, ask yourself. Always think and decide. That's you who work with this, and you the who will think, and you who will decide. It's really important. So that's what that's, that's you 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 have the right to change things, because you are the developer. You may do that. You think and decide, and you have a, a knowledge. You have a knowledge set, and you will find the best uh, way to do uh, the work. But, but uh, what I want to ask, don't do it blindly. So always think, always ask yourself, why I do it? Is it the best way as I can do it? But you will do that. The second thing is about, you should communicate it. And the third thing I want to talk about uh, a little bit is to use your solutions. So communicate. Who do you work with? You can see me in the pictures. Uh, maybe you can think that I, I'm alone. Uh, maybe. Uh, before we go over, uh, I want to ask who thinks who, who were, uh, that I work alone. So who think about themselves, yourself, that I work alone. I have no colleagues. I'm a freelancer. I work alone. Is there someone who works this way? OK. You never work alone. Even if you are a freelancer and you have no colleagues, you won't work alone. As you can see, I am not alone. This picture was taken in Amsterdam. I'm really proud of it. I like this picture very much. Uh, but this is just to illustrate that you never will be alone. And why I say this? Because if you work alone and you have no colleagues, you have a colleague in the future, your future self. Any time, so you work on a project. And some weeks later, or some months later, you will be an other person. You will have other problems. You work on other projects, or you will be in another part of the same project. And if you go back to the code you write, you won't remember to everything. So you always work in a team. Maybe if you have no colleagues, then your future self is your colleague. And that's, this is the reason why you have to Think about communication. 
okay, how can we communicate as developers? Two ways. First, coding standards. This is uh, what I said always, think, decide, and communicate. If you have your decisions and you, you want to communicate it, the good way is, the one good way is to, to have coding standards. We are really, uh, uh, we can really help because we, in Drupal, in the Drupal community, we have all coding standards for CSS. We had coding standards for PHP and JavaScript for a long time, and this is the youngest coding standards, but we have this. So as Drupal developers, we can use the Drupal CSS coding standards. And also because, because we do not live in an island, and we do not work alone, we can check other coding standards. I can recommend you the CSS guidelines from Harry Roberts, and also the CSS guidelines from Hugo. I, I don't know how to say his family name. <laughs> so, okay, that's it. This, that's the first thing, communicate coding standards. We, we communicate through code. So we have to have a common language. This is, this is what about coding standard, this is what coding standards are about, to have a common language. And don't do the things different ways. We have to have one way as we work. The other thing, comment your code. If you, if, if you won't remember anything else from my talk, please remember was this one thing. This is the most important. You can do anything, anything if you want. You, you can change your mind and uh, write your code here, so uh, this way, and write your code in, an, in a very different way, and use a lot of different classes, and uh, write flat selectors here, and long selectors there. It's okay, completely okay, you may do that if you comment your code. Because the most important thing is communication, and code commenting is a tool we can use for this. And maybe you can say that code should be self-documenting. Why should I comment? Does the, does the code, you read this and you will understand. No. <laughs> okay, so uh, what does this small snippet do? Never mind, it's not interesting. You can see what does it do. It's set the height to 100% and the font size to zero and the white space to no rep. That's okay, that's self-documenting. But it's not the interesting part. The interesting part is what's the purpose of the snippets? Why we do this thing? That's what we have to, that's what we have to know. That's why we have to comment it because if you want to maintain this snippet, you have to know what will be changed, what will be affected. Uh, I worked a small uh, Drupal core issue uh, when I find uh, one rule is in a in the well, what was the forum in the forum code, we set uh, the table size. I, I don't, I can't exactly remember what was this, but it seemed that we do not need that. But I wasn't sure. And I looked for, back for years to find things about to find where, where was code first time written, to find a purpose. And, and there was a lot of time to find something about it. And, and uh, it was really hard to decide without comments. So without this, you don't know the purpose of this snippet. Maybe it is much easier this way. This way, you will see what the purpose of this snippet. Or, just another way of writing this, it's much easier to write this, it's inline comments. Okay, so please don't make me think, don't make yourself think, please comment your code. Please remember this one thing, please say with me, comment your code. I want to hear you comment your code. Come. Thank you very much. Just some slides. It's no sense. The third thing, use strict. So you decided the things, you commented, you have a coding standards, that's okay. And when you do this, please be consistent, please adhere the rules you set. 
help yourself. Be consistent, and if you work with others, and it's hard to ask them to follow your rules, you can use a tool like Lint. That's it. So these were the recommendations, not rules. Think and decide, communicate, use strict, and know this is the end. Really, these are the credits. I, this presentation is uh, based on the works of Harry Roberts and also influenced by, this is the second part, Oniko Fejes. It was a, a Hungarian talk at the web conference in Hungary two weeks ago. So thank you very, very much. And if you have questions, I'm here to answer. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Okay, uh, so uh, the first thing that uh, I think you don't have to have so too much utility classes. The second thing is why you could use utility classes uh, is to make you sure that your rule will be uh, used and not will be overridden in another rule. And the third thing that is the possibility of variations again. So if you have some utility classes, you don't have to uh, make it a part of your component. It's a separate class, and they can be reused. And also, your component will be more reusable, because it, it won't uh, have a part which, uh, which blocks this reusability. So for example, if you, if you uh, I, I mentioned the utility classes about uh, uh, floating something. If the floating is part of your or component, it will be much much harder to reuse that component because the floating is is uh, included in it. And if you want to use it in a case when you don't want to float it, it uh, you have to override your component. Something like this. Is it okay? Okay, I'm not sure that uh, you have to use utility classes. Uh, uh, since I tried to follow this method, I, I didn't use any utility classes. But if you want to know much more about it, I can recommend the CSSWizardy.com site. Uh, he, he writes about a lot more things. I think you are absolutely right, and uh, the, all the can, what I can say to this is that it, there is no one right way. I think so. There are ways we can use. There are ways uh, which uh, related to each other, but but you can decide. Not to, as as I said, I also not use any utility class since I tried to follow this methodology. That's all. You're welcome. Any other question? Yeah.
I think uh, the practice is always harder than than the just a set rules, and uh, it's a. Uh, uh, I just mentioned mentioned to someone before this talk that I work on a really small project. It's a one uh, one short static HTML page, and today it re rewrites it three or four times, and just some rules. So. Um, Yes, it, it, it can. It, it, it's possible that you can change or you can find a way first time, and you always can refactor your code. And you can find a way when you can follow these rules, and maybe you will find a situation when you can follow these rules because you don't have time, you don't, you, it's too complex, you don't understand, or, or it's, maybe it's not possible. But, but you, we can try because these, these kind of rules can help us to make much more maintainable code. Okay, yes? Yes. I hope that Drupal 8 can helps us to, to improve these things. The, the, the tools I mentioned in the presentation may can help, I hope. I'm not sure. And also, there could be another way. If you heard about web components, I think that's, uh, that's the future. Maybe it's the far future to be so, so general that, that, that there will be a time when maybe when we will write our components as a whole and want to uh, uh, differentiate our code as this is HTML, this is PHP, this is uh, the GS, this is the CSS, but we will uh, create components. And this is the UI component. It's, this is the HTML part, this is the GS part, and this is the CSS part, I hope. But this is the future. Uh, I think you you will write just those codes what you what you use, so that's, that's you want you sh you ha don't have to write the code what want, uh, you want to use. Is it okay? Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Parker. Yes? Uh, can you repeat the question, please? Uh, myself didn't use any style guide yet. <laughs> But I can recommend the KSS node because that's the tool I know about too, and this will what the tool I will try to use. In our company, we, we just not use style guides. I try to force it, but it's hard. <laughs> but I want to use style guides because I think this is the way we should work.
Das ist gut. 